Friends, we are so glad that you are here with us this evening. We did indeed experience a little bit of technical difficulty, but we are ready to celebrate the uh, solemn celebration of Holy Thursday. Good evening, and welcome to St. John the Evangelist as we celebrate the evening mass of the Lord's Supper. Please stand and join in our opening hymn, What Wondrous Love Is This? Good evening, and welcome to our celebration of Holy Thursday, the evening mass of the Lord's Supper. And we do especially welcome our parishioners of St. John who are participating by a live streaming in the sanctuary of their respective homes. We thank you for joining us this evening. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace and peace of God our Father in the love of our Lord Jesus Christ and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with, with your spirit. spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, we gather together in unity with the church throughout the world to celebrate these three holy days of grace and mercy wherein we commemorate the Paschal Mystery the Lord's passion and victory over death and sin. And this night we follow his example of charity and love as we wash once another's feet and break bread. Let us now acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Together, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. 
And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray, O God, who have called us to participate in this most sacred supper in which your only begotten Son, when about to hand himself over to death, entrusted to the church a sacrifice new for all eternity, the banquet of love. Grant, we pray, that we may draw from so great a mystery the fullness of charity and of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated, and we are now going to listen to the Word of God. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, 
This month shall stand at the head of your calendar. You shall reckon it the first month of the year. Tell the whole community of Israel, on the 10th of this month, every one of your families must procure for itself a lamb, one apiece for each household. If a family is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join the nearest household in procuring one and shall share in the lamb in the proportion to the number of persons who partake of it. The lamb must be a year-old male and without blemish. You may take it from either the sheep or the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month, and then, with the whole assembly of Israel present, it shall be slaughtered during the evening twilight. They shall take some of its blood and apply it to the two doorposts and the lintel of every house in which they partake of the lamb. That same night, they shall eat its roasted flesh with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. This is how you are to eat it. With your loins girt, sandals on your feet, and your staff in hand, you shall eat like those who are in flight. It is the Passover of the Lord. For on this same night, I will go through Egypt, striking down every firstborn of the land, both man and beast, and executing judgment on all the gods of Egypt. I, the Lord, but the blood will mark the houses where you are. Seeing the blood, I will pass over you. Thus, when I strike the land of Egypt, no destructive blow shall come upon you. This day shall be a memorial feast for you, which all your generations shall celebrate with pilgrimage to the Lord as a perpetual institution. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join in singing our responsorial psalm, taken from Psalm 116, the name of God. Our response is, I will take the cup of life. I will call God's name all my days.
can't call upon your name. You are my promise for all to see. I love your name, oh God. I will take. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread, and after he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also the cup, after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. be with you and with your spirit a reading is taken from the holy gospel according to john glory, glory to, to you o lord. lord before the feast of passover Jesus knew that his hour had come to pass from this world to the Father. He loved his own in the world, and he loved them to the end. The devil had already induced Judas, son of Simon the Iscariot, to hand him over. So during supper, fully aware that the Father had put everything into his power, and that he had come from God, and was returning to God. He rose from supper and took off his outer garments. He took a towel and tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and dry them with a the towel around his waist. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Master, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, What I am doing, you do not understand now, 
but you will understand later. Peter said to him, you will not, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, unless I wash you, you will have no inheritance with me. Simon Peter said to him, Master, then not only my feet, but my hands and head as well. Jesus said to him, Whoever has bathed has no need except to have his feet washed, for he is clean all over. So you are clean, but not all. For he knew who would betray him. For this reason he said, not all of you are clean. So when he had washed their feet and put his garment back on and reclined at table again, he said to them, Do you realize what I have done for you? You call me teacher and master, rightly so, for indeed I am. If I, therefore, the master and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. I have given you a model to follow, so that as I have done for you, you should also do. My dear friends, this is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Please allow me a few moments of your time so that we can reflect on the gospel reading, especially here today, tonight on Holy Thursday. And this reminds me of a very funny story about a couple. Probably I've shared this with you in the past, but this is something that I would like to tell again. This is about a woman who was so distressed she accompanied her husband to the doctor's office. After his checkup, the doctor was so concerned. So he called the wife into his office alone. He said, your husband is suffering from very severe stress. If you don't do the following, your husband will most definitely die. So the woman quickly said, tell me, doctor, what do I need to do? The doctor said, here. Every morning, fix him a healthy breakfast. Be pleasant at all times. Make him something nutritious for lunch. And at dinner time, prepare an especially nice meal. Do not burden him. And do not discuss your problems with him. It will make only his stress worse. And most importantly, the doctor said, never nag him. He said, if you can do this for the next 10 months to a year, your husband will regain his health completely. So on the way home, the husband saw how distressed his wife was. So he asked her, what did the doctor say? The woman looked at her husband and said, Honey, the doctor said, you are going to die. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, this humorous story points out the reality of what we are celebrating tonight. If love is not paired with service, we cannot truly live. On this celebration of Holy Thursday, we recall three things. The institution of the Eucharist, the establishment of the priesthood, and the Monday of serving one another. God is teaching us tonight the importance of service. 
The Eucharist is the sacrament of fraternal charity, and from it, we must draw the spirit of loving service. I can still remember last Palm Sunday, I left to you a very important question. And the question that I posed to you, can you be Christ, the anointed? Can you be Christ to your family during this Holy Week, most especially, so that salvation comes to your home? Brothers and sisters, to be Christ in our present world, we are required to know Jesus and to follow his example. And tonight, we are shown a very important example that we ought to do to live this life as people of God. An example of humble service out of our love. The way to bring His presence alive in our world is through that service. This is the reason why on that last supper, Jesus instructed His disciples to wash each other's feet, to show them the example of service because through service, when we serve others, we make Jesus alive and active in our midst. Our gospel proclaimed, I have given you a model to follow so that as I have done for you, you should also do. And this reminds me of your human, of our situation now that we are all sequestered, that we are all basically within our homes. And I believe God offers us the opportunity to go home, to be back with our families. Now we see each other. Now we realize the gravity, the seriousness of the work at home, the management of family, the economics before us. I'm all, I am reminded of the news saying that crime now is way, way reduced. There is no robbery, there is no theft, but what, what had reason is domestic dispute. It is simply because things that are happening at our home requires a sincere and serious attention that now is the time really to make Jesus real and alive. And we can only do that when we pay attention to one another, to serve one another, to help each other. We make Jesus real and living when we help one another, especially at home. I will pose to you a challenge on this Holy Thursday. Are you willing to remove your apron of privilege or pride and replace it with the apron of love, understanding, and service. We are reminded to look at Jesus, to know him. Jesus emptied himself of his divinity and embraced the humility of serving our world. And he is giving us this example so that we should also do by the very act of helping or serving or reaching out to one another, especially for those people in need. We are making Jesus present and alive. So again, the question is, are you willing to take off your outer garment are you willing to stoop down and bend your knees to wash each other's feet? For others, it may not be an apron of privilege or pride. For others, it may be instead an apron of jealousy, an apron of anger, selfishness, 
laziness, or whatever our apron is, the challenge and the call for us is, can we lay it down and replace it with the apron of understanding, with the apron of mercy and forgiveness, with the apron of love and service? When we take off our outer garment, then all things are possible for us because God dwells in us. When we stoop down, we can reach others' feet. Tonight, I suggest, especially during this COVID-19 pandemic, now is the time to live the life of the Eucharist by serving one another. I suggest that we start putting on the apron of loving service and follow the example Jesus has given us. This is our Holy Thursday. This is our night. This is now the night to decide to follow the call of Jesus to serving one another. May God grant us peace. Amen. the mandatum has been omitted from this year's Mass. This is an opportunity for you at home to remember the time that Jesus washed the feet for all of humanity. I see shadows
Brothers and sisters, we have been called to serve all the world in our example of Christ's love and charity. Let us call upon the name of God and offer him our prayers and petitions for the needs of the world and all of God's people. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the whole church throughout the world, May it dwell in unity and peace, faithfully proclaim the gospel of Christ, and serve all humanity with deep respect and humility after the example of Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this nation and all the sovereign nations of the world, may justice prevail in every place May presidents, kings, prime ministers, congresses, and parliaments rule with respect for the law of God and for the good of all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved community of St. John the Evangelist, may God grant us the grace to remain steadfast in faith and always close to the heart of Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the poor, the ill, for those unjustly deprived of li liberty, for the hungry and all in great need. May the God of compassion bring them comfort. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who've been afflicted with the COVID-19 virus, for their families, and for all medical professionals working on the front line of this pandemic, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died in Christ, especially Sister Mary Gerard McCloskey, aunt of Denise McCloskey. For all the deceased of this parish, for all who rest in our cemeteries. May God grant them rest and bring them to life on the day of the Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. <clears throat> Eternal and ever-living God, as you once heard and answered the prayers of your people in bondage, once again hear and answer these prayers that we place before your heavenly throne. We ask this through our Lord, 
our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> As I went down to the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the starry crown? Good Lord, show me the way. Oh, sisters, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Oh, sisters, let's go down, down to the river to pray. As I went down to the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the robe and crown? Good Lord, show me the way. Let's go down, let's go down, come on down, come on brothers, let's go down, down to the river to pray. As I went down to the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the starry crown, good Lord. Show me the way. Oh, Father, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Oh, Father, let's go down, down to the river to Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. May the mystery of this water and wine may we come to share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite hearts, may we be accepted by you, Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Lord, was away my iniquities and cleanse me of my sins. Pray now, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries, for whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the true eternal priest who instituted a pattern of everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim, commanding us to make this offering as his memorial, as we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us. We are made strong, and as we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim.
indeed holy O Lord and all you have created rightly gives you praise for through your son our Lord Jesus Christ by the power and workings of the Holy Spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the Sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore O Lord we humbly implore you by the same Spirit graciously Make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks, he said a blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you in a similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and once more giving thanks he said a blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by his death, you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint John the Evangelist, our patron saint, and with all the saints, on his constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, William, our Archbishop, and all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him. O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Now coming together as one God's family, informed by the divine teaching, we dare now to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Take away the sins of the world. Have mercy, mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away. This is Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe, free from the light. For those of you who are at home and would want to have a spiritual communion with the Lord, I'd like to invite you to pray the act of spiritual communion, and I will be praying with you. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in a most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart, I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Save 
Almighty God, that just as we are renewed by the supper of your Son in this present age, so we may enjoy his banquet for all eternity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And before we do the reposition of the Blessed Sacrament, I would like to thank, first of all, the spiritual response team of St. John led by Doug Byerly and his team. We thank all of you for your assistance this evening. And most especially, I thank all the families of St. John the Evangelist Church community in Lone Green Valley and all my friends all over joining us tonight <clears throat> and praying with us as we celebrate the Holy Thursday in the sanctuary of your homes. Please continue to tune in tomorrow to the same St. John the Evangelist Facebook as we continue live streaming the Good Friday and then also on Saturday at the same time for Holy Saturday Easter Vigil. Easter Sunday Mass will be at 9 o'clock in the morning. That will also be live stream. And during this shelter-in-place period, please check always your website, Facebook, and flat notes emails for all the communication coming from St. John the Evangelist Church. And most especially if you have a need for us, please call us. If you have special intention, contact us by mail or by phone. Use our daily prayer that we send to you. This is composed by our staff for your spiritual enrichment during this period of pandemic. And make and always remember we are praying for all of you and your loved ones. And most especially, I would like to thank all our parishioners for your ongoing support to our parish community during this time of disruption. As a pastor, I'm always concerned 
by the continuous cancellation of masses, for this also disrupt our offertory giving, and we depend so much on your generosity. Our parish operations depend so much on your weekly giving, so please mail your contribution or visit our website to do online giving. Again, thank you so much for joining us as we begin the first day of the Holy Triduum. Join us and continue our celebration. See? <laughs> 